Hello, I'm here with Dr. Fishborn from HCC, here to answer some questions about misinformation. Thank you for joining me, uh, Dr. Fishborn. It's a pleasure to be with you today. Yep. So my first question for you, uh, what is the difference between misinformation and disinformation? Good question. Um, the difference between misinformation and disinformation. Let's start with what is information. True information is valid based on scientific knowledge and facts. We have the evidence to, to support that. Misinformation occurs when we don't know all the facts. We don't have all the evidence in front of us. So a lot of people will fill in some gaps in order to uh, plug that in. That's understandable, but misinformation can correct itself over time with good science. Disinformation is the intent to deliberately misinform somebody. Um, and, and that's the big question. You, you, you need to understand what's the intent? Why are you trying to disinform somebody? What's the reason? What's the motivation behind it? Who's the person? Is the person trying to disinform for profit, for money, to get the outcome that they want? So there's a lot of reasons um, why disinformation is there, but there's also the understanding that we have misinformation, which hopefully over time will correct ourselves. Okay. And uh, why do why why do some people um, react to misinformation? Reacting. Um, if you think about all of us, if you think about all the people that you know, we all have different personalities. Some people are just by nature, by their by their own traits, very excitable, um, and these are the ones will hear something and without thinking, they'll be the ones that will very quickly respond with a, oh my God, did you hear this? And, and pass on the information. Other people by their personality or by their traits are very deliberate, very conscientious. They spend a lot of time thinking. So when they hear something, they may react with, wait a minute, what is that? Maybe I should look more into that. So we all have different personality traits that just like anything else, when we hear something, we respond um, differently. Okay. Um, how can misinformation affect an individual? Just like with our personality, in terms of how we react to, to uh, misinformation, our own personality can help us understand um, how misinformation can affect us. Um, if you think about, th there's an example where if you have a cup and you fill the cup with pebbles, you can only hold so much water. How many pebbles are there? We're all under different levels of, st of stress. Um, so today, how much stress can you put into your, into your own cup? Some people can't handle much stress. Some people might be prone to anxiety or be prone to depression. So when they're being hit with misinformation, um, and again, depending upon their personality, they may respond um, in a way that makes mental health um, be a concern. Other people, when they have misinformation, they, they might get energized and think, oh my gosh, that can't be true. And so with that, they may turn to wanting to do something about it. So we're all different, and that's, that's the interesting thing about psychology. We respond differently, but if you think about basic personality traits, it might be a clue as to who's responding and how they're responding and why we're so different for that. Okay. Why do some people feel the need to share information? By nature, we're, we're social. We, we want to communicate, we want to share. We want to share what we know, we want to share um, uh, things that can help confirm what we think might be true. We want to share in order to maybe disprove what we're hearing, but we have a need to share um, and the need to share can be different. Um, and again, some people may share in order to soothe themselves other people may be share in order to find more things out. And some people are just more dramatic and they share for maybe to be the center of attention, maybe to, you know, um, to, uh, to, uh, to, to get some attention um, because that's the nature of the personality. What makes misinformation believable? Um, we're always trying to think of, of, we're always thinking, we're always making decisions. Every day we make big decisions maybe, or small deci decisions, but our brain is 
is we, we've trained our brain to get to know us. We've trained our brain what to expect. So when we hear something, um, you know, our brain is going to help us to take in information and, and make a decision. Um, what if, and, and especially in a time when we don't know something, like, like with the COVID, we don't have a lot of the information. So if you hear five things and they all sound similar and they're coming from five different sources in your mind, we might think, oh, you know what? I hear that's what I've heard. Yeah, I've heard that. And so because we've heard it so much through repetition, we're more likely to think it's believable. Um, in psychology, we talk about this thing called the availability heuristic. It's a shortcut. We use information available in our mind to make decisions. Okay. And do you have any final thoughts? Please, there. You know, you're you're in college. We're we're in college. We learn in how many classes about the scientific method. How many of your classes involve how to think critically? This is the time where we can put those skills to the test. If you're learning about the scientific method, to think about what you're hearing, to gather information, to look for validity behind what you're hearing, you can take what you're learning in college and make it make it work in your practical life. And in times like the pandemic, the misinformation that's around, we can help each other out by putting those critical thinking skills to use. All right. Well, Miss, thank you for joining us today. It was a pleasure. Thank you.